Buonasera, signore, buonasera. Come bello stare a Napoli e sognare. Quante volte ho sussurrato, amore, ti amo. Buonasera, signore, kiss me good night. Buonasera, signore, kiss me good night. Buonasera, Charles. Buonasera, Lena. Buonasera. Buonasera. <laughs> All right. It's great to see you. It is great to see you. It's great to be back in New Orleans. Five weeks on the road, and uh, we're back. And um, life's good. Life's really good. Yes, it is. And welcome to our show, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Buona sera, Louisiana. We really appreciate it. We love doing this show for you. And we're going to be, we're expanding. We're going to be seen in more places, right, Charles? Lena, you know, you're right. And what's great is uh, the Louisiana Film Channel has, has sent us a note. They saw what we've done. They want to feature us and we'll be on Baton Rouge TV. So now we'll have WLE in New Orleans and we're going to have a Baton Rouge through the Louisiana Film Channel. And there's a lot of great Italians in the Baton Rouge market. So yes, things are growing. So hi out there, Baton Rouge. We love you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. And we want to we want to thank the Film Channel. It's a great concept. It's only two years old, and they're really starting to show a lot of Louisiana talent and, and product uh, production of film and video and us. So that's a great idea that they had to promote Louisiana filmmaking. Wonderful, and we are excited to be part of it. All right, Charles. So uh, my pretty background today, of course, I know everyone recognizes that that is Sydney behind me, Sydney, Australia. I have this up today because our special featured artist for La Musica is actually from Sydney. You know, it's great to learn how we have this Italian community in Australia. I think most people wouldn't know that. So great, yeah. great idea, Lena, to focus on Australia this week. Yeah, so I, I found that they do have an Italian, an Australian Italian festival um, there. It is at the TYTO Parklands, Ingham, North Queensland. Australia and um, they celebrated their 25th anniversary in 2019 and it's really cool to see it looks like our festivals their festival there it looks just with the entertainment and the food and all the fun they're having so it's it's really neat to see that they're they have an uh, Italian festival there well I've been to Carnes and it, it's right it's south of Carnes on that area but I, you know what, what I got me Lena is that they went there to cut sugar cane. So it does look like a Louisiana Italian festival. For the same, they're, here, they're there for the same reason they came to Louisiana. Yeah, isn't that interesting, Charles? I mean, I'm seeing these guys talk about how hard it was cutting sugar cane in the footage you got, and it, and it looks like it came right out of uh, Acadiana. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so if you want to check it out, they have a website, australianitalianfestival.com.au. So you can look at their, what they have for their festival. It's pretty interesting. All right, Charles. So look at your background. Ooh. I, I actually have never been to Rome. So it's got to be something I do soon. And, and what a great background you, that we have here with the flag on it behind it. And it's all about Republic Day, you know? Right. Yep. And um, so w they celebrate. I know I've seen the videos of the jets flying over with the red, white, and green smoke coming from the jets it's really spectacular so lena republic day in italy is celebrating the day that italy voted in 1846 to become a republic and got rid of the monarchy which had led to mussolini so it's a big day in italy and they put a wreath in the tomb of the unknown soldier and one of the most beautiful things is these nine jets flying three with red three with white and three with green trails behind them flying over italian parliament it's a really big day in Italy, and it's coming up June 2nd. So that's what you see here. Uh, and Italians, we see those jets, but I don't know if people realize that it's Republic Day. So that's the, where the big celebration happens is in Rome. Is that right? Absolutely. They fly over Rome Parliament, and you got these impressive nine jets in formation with the Italian flags, uh, colors being emitted out the back of their exhaust, and it just looks really impressive. And then they also, like I said, they put a wreath at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. There's parades. And it's like our Independence Day. Everything is closed. The banks are closed. The schools are closed. They sit down, and that's Independence Day for Italy. Oh, that's really wonderful, Charles. I love it. Yeah, it's a great day. It's a really great day. Yeah. And we should all know that that's June 2nd. 
Right. Well, Charles, speaking of um, Italy, I have a check this out today. And my check this out is if you're planning to go to Italy and you've never been before, here are eight helpful things to know when visiting Italy. Number one, don't eat too much pizza. The pizza is really good and you're going to want to eat pizza, but just have a little bit (laughs) because there's plenty of other food and you don't want to stuff yourself and ruin your trip and gain a bunch of weight. (laughs) That's number one. Number two, consider the weather. It gets pretty hot there. And if you're going in when it is hot, a lot of places don't have air conditioning and you're going to want to make sure that you are packing for the weather of when you're going. Number three, dress appropriately because there's a lot of places where you have to be dressed conservatively and just make sure you know the dress codes and you're, and you're packing some conservative clothing. Uh, number four, make sure you're carrying cash because a lot of places don't take cards and you know, you're going to grab that quick gelato and do some quick things while you're sightseeing and, and, and buying souvenirs and things you're going to want to have cash with you. So make sure you have cash. Uh, Number five, make sure you validate your train tickets because you'll be in big trouble if you don't. (laughs) And then number six, don't plan to sightsee on Sundays because Sundays is very um, day of rest in Italy and religious day and a lot of places are closed. So make that your day to leisurely stroll around and, you know, don't plan to do any activities on a Sunday there. Number seven, make sure you buy your tickets in advance. Otherwise, you're going to be waiting in really long lines and it's really unnecessary. Buy all your tickets to your um, things you want to see in advance. And last, you don't have to tip in Italy. (laughs) We are so used to tipping and it's really hard not to do it, but tips are included everywhere. Unless, of course, you feel someone has really gone above and beyond. Just don't worry about tipping. And that's it. That is great, Lena. And I, I, having been to Italy, I wish I had listened to you before. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's helpful to know these things. Definitely on the pizza. <laughs> yeah. I, I ate I too much pizza when I was there. <laughs> Easy to eat too much because it's so good. Yes. But there's so many other great things to eat. So, you know, and pizza is very filling. So, you know, you'll ruin it for yourself in, in tasting other foods. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Charles, it's time for Charles Celebrates Culture. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Our culture. It's the best. It's the best. We're talking about Republic Day today, and I didn't know anything about Republic Day until I met you. So tell tell us all how you discovered uh, Republic Day and how you started celebrating. Well, you know, Lena, growing up here, I didn't know anything about it. I was out in San Francisco area, and I was mayor of a town out there. So I got invited to the Italian Consulate's events at the San Francisco Yacht Club every year and realized this is a really big deal. He gives out awards to leading Italians and, you know, there's the food and the music, and it's just really done first class to be part of what's going on in Italy. And it may be because we're, we think of identify as Sicilians here. We don't get into Republic Day. I'm not sure what it was, but when I came back, I thought we need to start doing this here because it, it's such a critical part of the Italian culture. Uh, Vince Liberto was the first person we honored. And Vince is a great guy. His son just got elected student council president, Jesuit. Everybody loves Vince. If, you, if I go someplace and I'm trying to make, in, make become friends, in fact, one time I was there trying to get in the door someplace and somebody walks in that I'm trying to get to see and he sees me, he goes, hey, you're on Vince Liberto's Facebook page. <laughs> <laughs> so we honored Vince Liberto because his family values are what, what this Republic Day should be about. His spirit, everything about him said, I'm a, I'm a good Italian guy. Um, and then, obviously, I got to know you a little bit better, and then you were our next honoree. 
And uh, you took it to another level when you put Chow women and said, we're going to really make this special. Uh, that was 2016, I believe. And then we, we started really planning for 2017, where you brought in some great people that we honored, Barbara Chafisi and many other places. And we went to Dini's and, and just had such a great event after, your, after yours. And you were also being honored in D.C. at the same time. So it was really neat to honor some leading Italians for their contributions. This year it was Leon Cannizzaro uh, was honored. We, we've really had some great people to recognize who are great Italians in, in New Orleans. I, I, was, I appreciated you so much when you honored me and you even made a proclamation for Lena Prima Day. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, Mike, yes, Mike Yanni and Jefferson Parish created Lena Prima Day that, when you were honored and uh, you know, delivered it and, and it just was uh, really wonderful to see because I think you combine so much of what our culture should be where you honor your parents and, and then but you, you're your own person and your own songs and your own style and everything else. And that's what I think we are is that we recognize our parents and always appreciate what they've done. But at the same time, we become our own people and take it another step higher. We stand on their shoulders, as they say. So you had done that and it was great. Thank you, Charles, <laughs> so much. I got to tell you, it meant a lot to me uh, when you honored me for Republic Day and that I learned what Republic Day was all about. And it it was very, very special to me. And I, the plaque that you gave me and the family values and spirituality and what you had written on that beautiful plaque and to have that proclamation done, it just was a really special moment for me that made me want to honor others and keep it going, keep that celebration going and um, honor other people. It, it lifts you up and it makes you proud. It makes you want to do more things for, for the community. So it's, it's a fantastic thing to celebrate our heritage in this way um, on June 2nd. And moving forward, we're going we're gonna to keep it going. We're going to do it every year. At the Bocce Club, where we had it for a couple of times, uh, there's some uh, Sicilians there that at the end, they broke in the singing the Republic National Anthem. <laughs> and that was really special to see these guys uh, get, get their energy, and their enthusiasm. You would have thought they just won the World Soccer Championship. They were so proud. <laughs> well, it makes you, that's what it makes you feel like, Charles. And you did that. You started that here and it's a great thing. And we're just going to keep it going because it, it does. It makes you feel proud of your heritage and your ancestors. And it's a beautiful thing. So we want to wish everyone a happy Republic Day. We need more Italian days of celebration. <laughs> So here we have one. It's a big one. <laughs> Thank you very much, Charles. Charles, starting the Republic Day in Louisiana. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, it was great. Yeah, it's great. Celebrating Culture is brought to you by Awe News. Awe News also produces New Orleans Insider Tours, which are 10 self-guided tours of New Orleans and Louisiana. To download the apps, all you have to do is point your phone at the flow code in the camera mode, and you're ready to really experience Louisiana. <laughs> All right, it's time for La Musica today. And um, like I was telling you earlier, our featured artist today is from Sydney, Australia. His name is Alfio, and he's a two-time Emmy-nominated international recording artist, performer, Australian-Italian tenor, songwriter, musician, and composer. He started singing professionally at the age of 17 and has performed in Australia, the United States, Europe, and Asia. He was born in Sydney to Italian-born parents and is the youngest of five children. The family is a musical family where every member sings or plays an instrument. His father and his mother were both originally from Sicily and they met and married in Australia, but their Italian roots remain firmly planted throughout Alfio's childhood. He's a self-taught musician and he has the ability to play instruments by ear. He plays piano, guitar, melodica, and accordion. He sings in several different languages, English, Italian, Spanish, Arabic, and Chinese, and sings not only the classic songs, but many Italian and Spanish folk songs from many different regions in Italy, Spain, and South America. I saw him at the National Italian American Foundation Gala in Washington, D.C., and we met each other. He is absolutely fantastic. His energy and charisma and that voice and he's nonstop. He knows how he goes out in the crowd. He knows how to get everybody excited. He is absolutely fantastic. And I'm so excited to show some 
video footage of him right now. So I hope you enjoy it. Absolutely fabulous, Lena. And, and having seen this, what I do have to say, I like actually hearing an Italian Australian accent. So he is great. Let, let's uh, let, let our audience see what we got here. Yes. lucido e tira forte il vento c'è una vecchia terrazza davanti al golfo di Sorrento con un ombraccio una ragazza dopo che aveva pianto poi si scarisce la voce e comincio il canto Te voglio bene assai. Americans always seem so surprised when they find out that I'm Italian from Australia. <laughs> it's like, what? Which one is it? But besides the fact that there is about six million Italian Americans in, in uh, America and about one million Italian Australians in Australia, there's like a parallel story, you know. They all left Italy searching for better things in other parts of the world. Some went to America, some went to Canada, some went to Australia, some went to Argentina, Venezuela. And um, my father left Sicily in 1956 on a boat. And with, with him and with all the Italians who left, and not just Italians, any, any nationality, any country that people left to search for better things in other parts of the world, they took everything with them. The music, the culture, the tradition, but most importantly, the music, of course, yeah? So my father brought this song to Australia with him, and it's a song which I've never heard anybody sing in this particular way, that he sings it. And I want to dedicate this song to my father, Papa, this one is for you, Aluna Menzomari. Thank you very much. Ci perda volontieri la mia vita Ci perda volontieri
Thank you very much. Yay, Alfio! <laughs> <laughs> Isn't he fantastic? Oh my God. He, he is, and, and just like, just, just what a tribute to the Italian culture that this young man is. And the story that these Sicilians are in Australia, you, you wish them the best that they really inspire that, that, that our Italian community over there. And he has so much great energy. So what a great he, person to be there. He does, and what a voice. And it's just wonderful to hear him talk with his Australian accent. That makes it even more him even more unique. Um, and then to hear him sing in Italian and speak in Italian, it's just amazing. I had no idea there were um, Italians in Australia, so it's, it's an interesting story. It is, and he tells it so well that they left in the 1950s, so they're 80 years behind the Italian migration to America, but here are these Sicilians in the 1950s wanting to go pick uh, cut sugarcane in Australia. Uh, it's been able to look in real time what our ancestors were doing. Yeah. Yeah, it's a beautiful story um, to hear him tell it, and um, we're just so grateful that he let us feature him today, and we want to give a shout out to Alfio uh, and hope to see you soon. Hope to, yeah, absolutely. And their, their Italian event in Australia is right at a Republic Day weekend as well. Oh, really? It's the first weekend in June. Oh, perfect. <laughs> Well, Charles, I had a great time today. I love doing our show. I always do, Lena. This is just the best and, and really neat to, to focus on Australia for this show. And Republic hey, Day. <laughs> hey, mate, we need to get some pizza in Australia. <laughs> it's Republic Day, mate. <laughs> there mate. you go. It is Republic Day, yes. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for watching, and we will see you soon. And uh, don't forget to sign up for um, the email list so that you can get these episodes delivered directly to your inbox. And that's all I have to say. All right. Ciao, 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 ciao. <laughs> ciao. Quando eu voltei ao sussurato amor te amo Bona sera, senhora, kiss me goodnight <música> We spent five years touring Louisiana. We've interviewed countless numbers of people. The people that make it happen, that put on Mardi Gras, the chefs, the artists, the backbone of Louisiana. We've taken those interviews and made a show called Celebrating Culture. But we've also taken those interviews and put them in a tour app, New Orleans Insider Tours. To download the apps, all you have to do is point your phone at the flow code in the camera mode. Once you have the app downloaded, you'll have access to putting together the best game plan experience in Louisiana. You can start with Little Palermo, which is 50 points of interest on the Italian community, and then go to Statue Stories and Spirits, over 150 stops in the French Quarter and CBD. Where to dine in New Orleans, what rooftop bars give you the best view, how to see the Gulf of Mexico from the coastal towns, driving up to the Bonnie and Clyde Museum near Shreveport, or up to Vicksburg. New Orleans and Louisiana are must-see for everyone, and there's so much to see. So we hope you enjoy it, and as we say here, let the good times roll. I am Lena Prima. My music is available on Amazon and iTunes, also BasinStreetRecords.com and LenaPrima.com. Please like my Facebook page, Lena Prima Official, and follow me on Instagram at Lena Prima. I would love it if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel, Lena Prima. Thank you so much. Ciao. Ciao. Welcome to the Italian Piazza in New Orleans, Louisiana. And right next door is the American Italian Cultural Center, which hosts numerous events throughout the year and is a great place to read about the Italian history. When you subscribe to Awe News, you'll get updated on all the videos we're making as far as the celebrities that come into New Orleans and talk about Italian culture, the parties, the events, what's going on. It's just a great way to learn about Italian history, the values, and what makes Italian being fun. Di Palare Italiano. 
Watch Celebrating Culture with Charles Marsala and Buena Seda, Louisiana, Sunday nights at 9 p.m. Central Time on WLAE-TV.